Hi, my name is Antje Matvienko and I'm from Technikum University of Darmstadt, Germany. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm going to present to you our work titled PyKR – Understanding Cyclists Crossing Decision Making at that Controlled Intersections Using Augmented Reality. Although the proportion of cyclists in road traffic is rising constantly, it doesn't imply an increase in their safety. While car drivers are protected with different active and passive safety systems, such as crumple zones, airbags, emergency brake, and intersection crossing assistance, cyclists remain among the most vulnerable road users. According to the accident reports, one of the most dangerous situations for cyclists remained uncontrolled intersections with cars approaching from both directions. Therefore, in this work we looked at the approaches to support cyclists crossing decision making at uncontrolled intersections. Previously, researchers have investigated the issue of road crossing for pedestrians and cyclists. For pedestrians, it implies that the decision has to be made statically by standing at the intersection or crossing while engaged in the secondary task. Several other works have specifically investigated the perception of vehicle gaps and crossing decision for child and adult cyclists. However, they did not explore technological assistance. In our work, we take a step further and evaluate assistance concepts for cyclists in the experiment on the actual bicycle to increase the ecological validity of the results by mimicking a realistic cycling experience. In their attempt to assist cyclists, researchers utilized a broad range of approaches, from multimodal assistance systems to projected surfaces and head-up displays. For example, they augmented the field of view with additional information or projected indications on the road surface. However, on one hand, they typically coupled to cyclist egocentric perspective and do not consider the objects decoupled from it. On the other hand, they are actually placed on the particular parts of the bicycle and body, eliminating the special link between warnings and the real world. Thus, we, we decided to use an augmented reality approach to overcome these shortcomings. Controlled experiments with cyclists often face a trade-off between close to reality environments and participant safety. On one hand, researchers aim to create experimental conditions that resemble the real world as closely as possible, while on, what, on the other hand, ensuring the physical safety of the participants. To create safe cycling conditions, researchers have previously designed fixed indoor bicycle simulators with the on-the-wall projections, uh, screen walls, or virtual reality headsets. However, one of the main limitations of such setups is the lack of the full cycling experience, including balance, coordination, and physical movement through space. As a first step to increase technological validity, researchers conducted experiments on restricted outdoor areas, which are typically used for car driver training and under real traffic conditions. However, mimicking hazardous situations under such conditions without endangering participants remain a challenging task. With our proposed AR-based approach for conducting user studies with cyclists, we aim to bring evaluations one step closer to safe yet close to reality environments. This approach combines movement in the physical world while going through the virtual environment shown in the augmented reality glasses. It facilitates an increase of ecological validity of user studies and enables simulation of hazardous situations without harm for participants. Given that the virtual environment is shown in augmented reality glasses, participants still see the physical world for safety reasons. We explore how cyclists can be supported in crossing decision making. For this, we develop an augmented reality simulation to enable two types of visual assistance X ray vision and the countdown, depicting the remaining time until a car enters the, in the crossing. In a controlled experiment with a real bicycle and AR glasses, we compare these two visualizations in dense and sparse traffic flows. For our evaluation, we recruited 24 participants, 12 male and 12 female. Our study design consisted of two independent variables, type of assistance and traffic density. For the type of assistance, we used X-ray, countdown and no assistance as a baseline. For the traffic density, we explored dense and sparse traffic flows. To create different levels of traffic density, we varied traffic direction and car gaps. 
For the traffic direction, we explored these situations where cars are coming from left, right, and both directions. For car gaps, we prepared five types of them, with a quarter step in relation to the stopping distance, 1.8, 2.3, 2.7, 3.2, and 3.6 seconds. These car gaps were used to uh, create unidirectional traffic flow and formed a, a dense traffic flow. To create a sparse traffic law, we doubled these gaps. In total, we tested six experimental conditions. We measured time to cross, the time cycle is spent at and inside an intersection, accident rate, we counted the number of occurrences a cyclist virtually crashed into a car, gap selection, we locked the type of gap between cars cyclists chose for crossing, minimum distance to cars, we measured the shortest distance between cars and cyclists when leaving an intersection after crossing, and subjective perception using acetylics and liquid scales. We found that cyclists make faster crossing decisions using AR visualizations for both dense and sparse traffic densities. However, the accident rate was statistically comparable in one visualizations and no assistance. For the gap selection, we found that most participants chose the largest available gap between cars in the dense and unidirectional traffic flow for both visualizations and no assistance. However, cyclists did not choose the largest gap in the sparse traffic flow. With the countdown visualization, cyclists chose the shortest gap of 4.5 seconds and 5.4 seconds with the X-ray and no assistance. At the intersections with the dense bidirectional traffic flow, cyclists chose a 4.5 seconds gap using the X-ray the most frequently. The selected gap for both the countdown and no assistance is 5.4. We discovered that the distance between a cyclist and the closest car was shorter for the dense than for the sparse traffic flows. We also found that cyclists were less mentally overwhelmed using the X-ray visualization and the countdown and no assistance when making crossing decisions in the, in the dense traffic flow. In summary, we showed that with the support of ER-based visualizations, cyclists successfully made fast road crossing decisions. Additionally, we discovered that cyclists were faster and more successful in selecting shorter gaps with the X-ray visualization while keeping the lowest accident rate. Lastly, the X-ray visualization led to a lower mental load while the countdown visualization ensured a feeling of safety and provided a better intersection overview based on subjective feedback. With this, I would like to end my talk and thank you for your attention.